I, I didn't favour any of them at the time. When I rediscovered them um, in 2001, when I found the dead stock, I definitely um, was more of a fan of the guidance. The thing that was clever about the equipment lines is that it was brand-led rather than consumer-led. In the modern era, you know, brands can be almost guilty of constantly trying to, you know, respond to what they think the consumer wants, when a lot of the time the consumer doesn't even know what they want until it's put in front of them. So I have huge respect for the equipment line in the way that <clears throat> there was a vision and they pursued a vision and they stuck to that vision. And not only that, it was a total vision, so it ran across the different categories. The influence of it has been more about the messaging of equipment. It was like, it's a pure performance message. And I think that's kind of very relevant, especially nowadays where all the fashion designers have, are having a love affair with sportswear, as they call it. I got a call from a friend of mine who'd found some dead stock uh, up in the northeast of England. And amongst all that, there were these boxes of equipment shoes. And I was, and as I started to look at them, I was like, actually, these look pretty good. And I had to kind of, I have to put my hands up now and sort of say that I think that the design of these shoes was actually ahead of its time. You know, we were quite set in our ways as to the aesthetic that we liked from Adidas. But kind of finding dead stock pairs of them, like say, or, or like a decade after they were released, I was like, no, actually, these look pretty good. As you can see, there's probably about 1,100 shoes in here. They're one of the pairs that I bought. Um, this was a dead stock pair that I picked up in about 2001. But this detail here, the way, I mean, I think it's an amazing piece of design. So I guess I gave them a bit of a reappraisal. I didn't understand that it was going to be, you know, that was going to become the sort of dominant logo in the company. Um, I saw a fax um, from Peter Moore where he was talking about how the trefoil didn't, he felt like it looked stuck on, on shoes, and that this fitted better. And I kind of understand the rationale behind that, but I actually think the trefoil is beautiful on shoes. I think it's like the, you know, it's, it's the cherry on the top of the cake. And this idea that it looks stuck on, I mean, I, I, I'm a kid that grew up in that era where it was like, you know, we were very brand minded. So I quite like the fact that the branding was kind of outstanding. I don't want my brand, I didn't want my branding kind of cam camouflaged in, into the design of the shoe. I, 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 you know, and I, I personally think the Trefoil is one of the most beautiful graphics ever by any brand or any company. auf Adidas getrimmt schon entdecken, das so der ZD 2000 Original, das war damals so ein Must-Have. Es gab damals auch so zwei, drei Farbgebungen und das war ein Schuh, der mir immer wieder über den Weg gelaufen ist und der halt einfach immer aufgefallen ist und den hatten die coolen und die großen Jungs immer an. Und das war halt das, was man selber auch haben wollte. Man wollte immer das Beste vom Besten haben, von der Qualität her, man wollte preisintensive, ähm, Sachen haben und oft war das halt so, dass man sich auch an den Westen orientiert hat. So, weil die, auch so Westdeutsche hatten ja immer das Beste vom Westen, die hatten, hatten Geld, konnten sich teure, teure Bekleidung leisten und ähm, Ostbürger haben denen halt oft nachgeahmt. Und, ähm, der Trend ist bis heute immer noch ähm, relativ stark in den östlichen Regionen und 
äh, auf jeden Fall in Berlin äh, mehr denn je größer als in jeder anderen Metropole weltweit. Definitiv. Die Schuhe sind sehr robust, sehr qualitativ, sehr hochwertig. Und äh, man benutzt halt oft den Slogan, wie er damals auch zu äh, Equipment ähm, die Serie The Best of Adidas. Das ist so der Slogan, den man immer wieder irgendwie verwendet, so als Sammler, weil man halt projiziert auf diese Modelle. Das ist das Beste, was es mal gab, die beste Qualität und äh, hochwertige Materialien. kann sie ja halt teilweise bis heute, 20 Jahre später, immer noch tragen. Und das ist eigentlich, was so den Hype um die Serie halt so kreiert, dass die Schuhe halt tragbar sind. Was die meisten Schuhe anderer Hersteller wo, ähm, heutzutage nach 20 Jahren nicht mehr sind. Und das macht es eigentlich aus. Equipment was presented or introduced to me as uh, the best of Adidas and it was a new concept and this new concept was supposed to solve the big problem Adidas had at that time. That means at the end of the 80s, uh, Adidas as a company had a big problem about decreasing the demand of Adidas product. The way Rob Strasser and Peter Moore presented equipment was the solution to that problem. I think equipment brought a kind of new approach to how to create, design and to market products. I think it was a simple approach, really understandable approach, and uh, it has a big influence on the future of Adidas. Another definition of uh, equipment was about the essentials. So if you take football or soccer at that time, uh, the question was, what, what do you need to play football or to play soccer? And this is not about the most you can put on the product, but it's just the need, the essential. アディダスのまあエキュプメントのランニングシューズっていうよりは多分なんだろうサッカーのカテゴリーだったりとかまああらゆるスポーツのカテゴリーにおいてやっぱそのトップモデルであるとは思うのでもちろんまあプライスが高